thank you for joining us today for this family information session. We're delighted to welcome our students who choose back to our in-school hybrid learning this spring. I have a wonderful group of district and school leaders with us today to help share some additional information for our parents of students with special learning needs and what to expect over this last quarter of the 2021 school year. Ms. Linden? Hello, I'm Don Linden, Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning. Hello, my name is Marianne Fedition, and I'm the Executive Director for Student Intervention and Support Services. I'm Julianne Muir, one of the Assistant Directors of Student Intervention and Support Services. Hello, everyone. I'm Mary Weezy, another Assistant Director for SISS. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Thompson, another Assistant Director with Student Interventions and Support Services. Hello, everyone. I'm Will Wright. I'm the Principal at Logan Elementary. Hello, my name is Karen Siegel. I'm the principal at Ann Arbor Open. Hello, I'm Janet Chuam, the principal at Huron High School. Hello, I'm Andrew Cluley. I'm the director of communications for Ann Arbor Public Schools. We look so forward to spring learning together, welcoming and smoothly transitioning our students whose families choose the hybrid learning option as well as continuing to serve our students who are more comfortable remaining in a fully virtual learning plan will characterize our work during these weeks of spring. As always, our capable and caring teachers, case managers, related service staff, and our paraprofessionals are here to support our students, parents, and families. In addition, your school principal and district leaders, just like all of us on this screen today, will be with you and answering questions as we move together through the coming weeks. From the beginning of the COVID global pandemic, we have stated our core value that upon return, our focus and our priority would be to renew and restore that full service approach for our, to support our students with special needs. In particular, we are focusing today on those areas that we know we're all thinking about. Continuing with student evaluations, serving academic and uh, skill development needs, as well as professional support services. So we'll be focusing in these areas during this information session to make sure that we're setting out all the information possible for our students and parents. Our commitment is that over the continuing weeks, we will continue to focus together to remain in close communication and to answer your questions in the very best way possible. We are excited to welcome our students to the Ann Arbor Public Schools. We know that it's been a hard year and particularly it has been for parents and students and families of our students with IEPs. We recognize that and we look forward to a time of continued communication and support and growth and development. Whether parents and students choose to return to school during these spring weeks, whether they choose to re-enter our in-school learning over the summer, or whether they choose to join us in the fall, we will continue to work really in two key and critical areas, supporting students with return to in-school learning while also continuing a strong and robust virtual education delivery. We will hold those two priorities alongside the priority of restoration, recovery, support, and continuing the growth 
and development and watching our students thrive over the coming weeks and months ahead. With that, I know, Ms. Linden, that you all have prepared kind of the nuts and bolts of what we know about the transition to in-school learning. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swift. It is our great pleasure to be here with you. And without further ado, let's get right into the information this evening. First, we'd like to remind our families about the stages of return. This information has been shared many times and we know your building principals are sharing it and we'll share it again with you, but it's always a good idea to begin with some common understandings. So our first stage of students are our preschool students, self-contained students, preschool students, young fives, and kindergarten students. They'll be returning March 25th. Our second stage are our first and second grade students who will be back for in-person learning if they choose on April 5th. Our third stage is our third, fourth, and fifth grade students. They will be returning on April 12th, should they choose. And in stage four, that's when we'll be beginning our middle school and secondary students return on April 12th. As always, before each phase, families can expect to receive a survey about their intentions to either return to in-person or to remain in virtual instruction. We want our families to know in the coming stages, if they have not yet received a survey, don't worry, you will, and it will be coming very soon to you. In that survey, you have two very short questions, whether you choose to return to in-person hybrid or whether you would choose to remain in remote settings. Of course, our school principals will be sharing information sessions with you, just as our elementary teams did during our stage one launch. And so you can look forward to those community meeting dates coming soon from your school principals. Just to reiterate, we have a cohorting system so that we can achieve social distancing in our in-person learning. And our students will be separated into cohorts. So students will be either in cohort one or cohort two, or they will remain fully remote according to parent choice. And if your student is in cohort one, your students will be coming to school on Monday and Tuesday for in-person learning and they will be remote on Thursdays and Fridays. Our Wednesday schedule remains the same as it has during the duration of the school year. If your student is in cohort two, they will be returning for in-person learning on Thursday and Friday of the week, and they will be in remote learning Monday and Tuesday. Our self-contained students will be in in-person learning four days a week. There is a bit of a phased in schedule for our students in self-contained placements, so they will be returning for two days on March 25th and 26th, and they will be returning again the following week for two days, that's a Monday and Tuesday, on April 5 and 6. And then beginning the week of April 12th, our students in self-contained placements will be in in-person learning four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday, with of course our regular Wednesday asynchronous schedule. To help you to envision what hybrid learning might look like, this is an aerial view of a classroom. This could be the layout in your student's classroom. You can see that our desks are spaced six feet apart. You can see that students, particularly at the elementary level, may be using a carpet space for their seating, and you can see those X's are six feet apart. You can see that our kidney-shaped table or small group table is in the corner of the room. In many classrooms, there are multiple opportunities for students to sit at small group tables, which will be spaced around the classroom. And you can see that the teacher's center for workspace is at the front of the classroom, nearest all of those wonderful technology hookups. The students will be engaged in three modes of learning during in-person and during remote. So students will be in whole group with, with all the members of their class, they will be in small group settings with just a couple of class classmates or members of their small group. And they will of course be engaged in some individual instruction from time to time with their classroom teacher. We look forward to sharing more about that in a secondary facing video. That secondary video will be available later this week. Our elementary video about virtual learning is available now on our website, A2Schools. As our staff begins to prepare to return for in-person learning, we want our families to know that it will involve a transition period. Our teachers will be engaged in professional development. They will be receiving safety training 
and understanding hybrid learning and all the pieces and parts of that implementation. And they will also be preparing their classrooms for student return. During the stages of return, teachers will be posting asynchronous lessons and activities for students. We don't want to miss a beat during those three days. So that schedule is here for you for stage one students return. Those asynchronous lesson days are March 22nd, 23rd, 24th. In stage two, those three days are March 24th, 25th, and 26th. And for our stages three and four, those three asynchronous days are April 7th, 8th, and 9th. And now I'm going to hand off to my colleague, Mr. Eric Thompson, to share some special education specific information. Thank you, Don. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about special education IEPs and evaluations. Our goal is to always implement IEPs fully. While we enter this hybrid stage, school teams will review IEPs and good faith effort contingency learning plans to maximize implementation. All outstanding evaluations will be conducted upon return to in-person instruction and evaluations will continue into the summer if necessary. We will prioritize evaluations beginning with those most delayed and steadfastly work to complete all evaluations. And we are pleased to share that a school psychologist have already begun scheduling in-person evaluations. Since the beginning of this journey, we have always committed that our first and foremost priority would be the safety, health, and wellness of our students, staff, and families. As we move forward to in-person instruction, we are always going to be guided by our super six mitigation strategies. One of the things that is part of our super six mitigation strategies is social distancing we will do to the best of our ability, make sure that we achieve a three to six foot distance of social distancing. But we also know for some of our students, they require very hands-on instruction and supports. As a result, our staff will have a full catch of PPE materials and supplies that include face shields, gloves, and masks. Um, to achieve what's necessary to help our students. Also, we know that masking is very important and it's also very important for our students. Um, as such, we also know that there are some students that masking will present a challenge for them. Our staff will, with care and patience, work with those students and the families to help them adjust to this very big change for them. Please also keep in mind that we'll have multiple su support for students regarding mask wearing. We are going to utilize social stories, visuals, and all our staff have this at hand to help your child uh, adapt to the new and current environment. Next, we'll talk about supporting your students in our school environment. At every stage of the student return, um, the student response team will be fully in place and ready to support our students whenever it's needed. Um, individual student intervention plans for behavior and other supports will be reviewed by your case manager and your team to talk about um, what those need to look like in person and if any changes need to be made for this new hybrid situation. In that planning process, we will also make sure that your student still has access to those sensory rooms and quiet spaces that they might need based on their behavior intervention plan. Building teams will update the student response plan to make sure that all staff are available in the building and that all staff has been trained in order to respond to those situations. For our special education supports and services, full services will continue to be delivered according to your student's IEP and GFE CLP while we are in the hybrid stage of learning. Providing in-person services will involve a transition period. So for a short period of time, in-person students will continue to receive these services virtually while our service providers are determining new schedules based on the family choices of who will be virtual and who will be in-person. Paraprofessionals will be providing support for students in person and will also continue to provide supports for students who choose to remain in the remote setting. Now I'll hand it off to Julianne. 
Now for information regarding recovery services. This summer, we have planned robust summer learning and service opportunities available for all of our students with IEPs. There will be a continuation and enhancement of our extended school year services, an expansion of our summer academies, and intensive reading intervention services. Programs will range from one week to four weeks of scheduled sessions, and they will be available to all students with IEPs. Services and supports will align with the IEP as a supplement to the special education services that your students receive and are intended to support the achievement and progress on the annual goals. Coming soon will be additional information on the district website concerning our summer learning opportunities. Please look for announcements and consult the district website for additional information. Our caring teachers and case managers understand the need for ongoing communication with our families. Teachers and case managers will be contacting parents now through March 17 to communicate plans and respond to any questions that you may have. In addition to this important layer of communication, you will continue to receive updates from your principals, teachers, and service providers about in-person service schedules as we proceed through hybrid instruction implementation. As always, we invite you to reach out to the school teams with any questions that you may have. Thank you everyone. And we would like to share our thanks for every single family and member of our school community. It has been a challenging year. We know that you have had to exercise much patience and we just appreciate you all so very much. We would like to receive your questions and we have a form for you. We will be putting this on the website. You'll be able to access it there. And we'll also make sure it's shared with you in your um, email so that you can access that form. We're interested in keeping um, up with you every step of the way and making sure that we get answers to each of your questions. It's going to involve connecting with your school teams to make sure we have every detail uh, covered and communicated before your student returns if you choose. So thank you, and I think we're ready to head into some question and answer at this time. Our panel will now answer some of the questions that we've already received. Our first question is, will my child receive his or her related services, speech, OT, et cetera, when they are returned to in-person instruction? I can take that question, Andrew. Students will receive their full services according to their IEPs and GFE CLPs. And that will continue um, throughout the rest of the school year. There will be a short period of time during this transition that students who are coming into the hybrid situation will continue to receive their services virtually while our case managers and our support service staff are creating new schedules um, and adjusting to the services. We look forward to making the shift in person services as soon as possible. Thank you, Mary. Our next question, my child has been waiting to get an evaluation for special education services for several months. When will this occur? I can take that one, Andrew. Uh, as I mentioned in the presentation earlier, special education evaluations will begin to take place in person as soon as possible. Uh, a team of school psychologists have already begun uh, working to schedule in-person evaluations for students uh, with outstanding evaluations. Uh, we will take we take this process very seriously and understand the importance and impact an evaluation can have on a child's life. We will work tirelessly to ensure every student has received the appropriate evaluations as soon as possible and continue the evaluation process into the summer if necessary. Excellent, Eric. Now, when does my child return to school? Once again, Ann Arbor Public Schools will be phasing students back for hybrid instruction in stages. Stage one will be pre-K through 12 students who are in self-contained classrooms, preschool students, young five students, kindergartens, and then some small groups of students in grades six through 12 will be back March 25th and March 26th. Stage two will be our first and second grade students, and they'll begin their return on April 5th. For stage three, it will be our upper elementary, through third, fourth, and fifth grade students starting April 12th. And then stage four will be all our other secondary students also beginning April 12th. Thanks, Karen. 
Uh, the next question is, will my child be in school four days a week or two days a week? Students in all grades participating in the hybrid instruction will attend in person two days per week, either Monday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday, according to their cohort that they have been assigned to. Students in self-contained classrooms will attend in person two days per week on Thursday and Friday, March 25th and 26th, and on Monday and Tuesday, April 5th and 6th. Students in secondary, grades six through 12, self-contained classrooms will attend for the full day. Beginning April 12th, students will attend four days per week on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesdays will remain asynchronous. How will staff help my child with one-to-one -one help and stay socially distanced? Staff will do their absolute best to maintain socially distant support, that six feet of distancing, while supporting and caring for students. But in instances where that is not possible, staff will be wearing masks and other PPE. Thank you, Julianne, for talking about how we'll be maintaining our social distance in the classroom. The next question is, when will my child's teacher or case manager contact me about my child's IEB and plans for hybrid? Teachers and case managers have already begun reaching out to families to communicate plans and respond to any questions you may have. All families of students with an IEP can expect to hear from your providers by March 17th. Will my child's paraprofessional continue to support my child? Yes, paraprofessionals will serve students in person at school. Students remaining in remote instruction will continue to receive paraprofessional supports in much the same way moving forward. We've mentioned previously that additional PPE is provided to staff who will need to be in close contact with students to provide that support. Thank you, Janet. Our next question, my child currently has a GFE CLP. When will their full IEP be back in place? Whether students participate in in-school hybrid learning or continue with virtual learning, full special education services will continue to be delivered according to the student's IEP and GFE CLP. Upon return to in-school learning, Building teams will review all IEPs to assess whether the full extent of the IEP can be implemented during the in-school hybrid instruction phase. It's important to remember that while we remain in a hybrid situation, every effort will be made to implement IEPs as written. Thank you, Julianne. Our next question, what about recovery services? When will that happen? Recovery services will be available to all students with IEPs, especially those who have been identified as recovery service eligible in IEP meetings. During remote and hybrid learning, many students received good faith effort contingency learning plans to accommodate limitations in these settings. Our goal is to begin to recover these services and supports over the coming weeks and months. An important part of this planning is the continuation of robust summer learning and service opportunities for our students with IEPs. Family can expect a continuation and enhancement of extended school year, summer academies, and intensive reading interventions. These programs range from one to four week sessions. Will the buildings be ready for our children to return? Our facilities department has worked diligently to ensure that our buildings are prepared according to the CDC protocol. That means through disinfecting and cleaning, updated ventilation systems and water filtration. Also, there will be signage to guide students throughout the building in a socially distanced manner. If I only want my child in the self-contained placement to attend two days per week instead of four, can we do that? Students in self-contained classrooms who select hybrid are scheduled to attend four days a week beginning April 12th. Should a parent wish to keep their child at home for two of those days, they may do so according to a set schedule arranged with the building principal and the classroom teacher. Thank you, Marianne. Our next question, I would like for my child to stay virtual. 
but I want them to have their speech OT resource services in person. Can we arrange drop-in services? We recognize that some families are wondering about this question, and we are working to consider ways to support it. Due to distancing, cohorting, scheduling among multiple service providers, and restrictions for families entering the building, we face some challenges in accommodating special schedules for students. We will share more information over the coming days. Thanks, Will. Our next question, my child attends early on programming. When will they get in-person services? I can answer that, Andrew. Early on, community-based preschool and services for our students in non-public schools will begin to transition to in-person services on April 12th. Your student's teacher or case manager will contact you to discuss the process and help you make the de best decision for your student. So since early on has a huge parent coaching component and takes place in the student's naturally occurring environment, which is often their home, it will be important to discuss the best options for your student and family with your providers. We've been working directly with WISD early on coordinator to create guidelines to help us in making these decisions. And they'll be based on what type of progress your student has been making on a virtual delivery model, preferences of your family, of course, and health and safety guidelines. Thank you, Mary. Our next question, what happens when a child needs a medical treatment, sensory room breaks, and CPI? How will staff maintain six feet of distancing? I'd like to let you all know that our outstanding nurses have worked tirelessly to prepare guidelines to ensure safe assistance for medical procedures such as feeding and toileting. And as Julianne had stated earlier, staff will do their absolute best to maintain social distancing, but for instances in which that is not possible, staff will be wearing masks and other PPE. Thanks. When will I find out which cohort my student is in? For the most part, students will be attending cohorts based on the first letter of the student last name. So A through L will attend cohort one and M through Z will attend cohort two. However, in instances where siblings might not have the same name or other circumstances where we need to achieve balance, principals are working with school teams in order to um, finalize the cohorts. And those will be communicated with families as soon as possible at the building level. Thank you, Karen. Will ESY be in-person or virtual? Thank you, Andrew. I'll take this question. We plan to offer robust in-person ESY programming this summer, as well as some virtual options and opportunities. Thank you, Marianne. For our final question, will my child, who is a student with ASD, be able to visit the building prior to returning in person since he's never been in the building? He needs to know where his classrooms are, and in particular the bathrooms, as he isn't aware of his needs prior to needing to go to the bathroom. I'm happy to answer that question, Andrew. For the purposes of health and safety, we are unable to have building tours in advance of in-person instruction. However, building principals and teachers will be sharing video tours and reaching out with social stories and other supports to serve this purpose. I wanna thank our panel for answering these questions today but we know that there are more questions that you may have. Please feel free to enter your question on the form from the email that we sent last week or right on this webpage. We'll be continuing to monitor those questions and we'll get back to you with answers as soon as we can. This pandemic year has been an especially challenging time for our parents and families and students with specialized learning needs. Our work to support our students and families we serve is focused in two key and critical areas. First, to support those students who will make the transition to in-school hybrid learning and just as strongly to continue to support our students and families who are most comfortable remaining in that fully virtual learning environment. We have understood from the outset of this pandemic that at the time of return, we would be on a full court press to support our students in enriching and fulfilling their learning needs. Well, now it's game time. 
and we're excited to welcome our students back to in-school learning over the coming weeks. Our commitment is to mobilize every resource to remain in close communication and particularly to have our focus on completing evaluations on the academic learning and skill development, on social emotional development and growth. Our commitment during this time is to mobilize every resource. We are focused on completing evaluations, on academic learning and skill development, on social emotional growth, on the provision of professional support services. And we know that during this time, it will be especially important to remain in close communication and partnership. It's our communication and partnership that enables us to achieve our shared goal of the learning and development, growth and thriving of our Ann Arbor Public Schools students. We have missed our students during this time and we've missed getting to see you with us in the school environment. We look so forward to welcoming you back to our schools over the coming weeks and also to connecting with our parents virtually as well. It is a time of hope and optimism, a time to move forward. Thank you for your time. We look so forward to welcoming our students back to an in-school learning opportunity. We look forward to seeing you at school and also to meeting and connecting with our parents virtually. It is truly a time of hope and optimism, taking our next steps together and moving forward. Thank you for your time today. And thank you for your support of our children, of our staff, and of the Ann Arbor Public Schools.